Logan Stout alongside Brandon Clay. We're bringing you the Lighthouse Thanksgiving Classic from right here in Corinth High School. We've got another good one in store for you as it's the homestanding Corinth Warriors against the Lausanne Lynx from Memphis, Tennessee. Another Memphis squad coming in here. And this is going to be an up and down exciting affair. We were hoping to tell you about some high major division one prospects on uh, the Lausanne team. One in particular we were gonna talk a lot about is Isaiah Stokes. He has a lower back injury and they have decided not to give him a go tonight. He will uh, be sitting out this game and maybe one more the coaching staff thinks. So uh, that's a blow for a lot of uh, But nonetheless, we plan on seeing some good basketball. First shot attempt up and no good for Cameron. They're going to rely on to step up, uh, said head coach Kenneth White in the absence of Isaiah Stokes. And quickly the other way, Corinth turns it over. The Warriors turn it over on their first possession. Really hurt. I had yeah. a chance to watch him in June. Absolutely love this play. We've got him ranked in the BrandonClayScouting.com Elite 25 nationally, which says a lot about what we see from him. His brother Jarnell played at Tennessee, so family tradition there. Three ball on the way, no good, off front iron. Uh, that would be Mark Crawford letting that one fly. It's no good, and here comes Corinth the other way. Trey Burkham, the star yesterday uh, for Corinth. I believe he led the team in scoring at several threes. A very crafty player. There's an outside shot from the top. Morris Gwynn, that, and a no-look pass position. A good find and the finish by Mark Crawford. Loose ball on the floor. Gets it. He gets it to Hack Smith. Smith into the front court. Gets it to Burkham. Burkham working against the long athletic Tameric Perry. I'm sorry, Cameron Taylor. Patterson with the basketball. Quentin Patterson. Boy, in your face, man-to-man -man D from Los Angeles. Got to give credit to the uniform, the, the uniform game of Los Angeles. They've got it going on. The bright yellow uniforms done by Nike. And they, uh, they look good. Their warm-ups and everything. That, that logo, that, uh, that kind of an old English-looking L, similar to the Louisville logo. Uh, Los Angeles got it. Can't miss it, man. It doesn't <laughs> doesn't hurt. Well, I like, you know, you talked about the in-your-face defense. You know, Rashad Williams wearing number four, just a freshman, a uh, classmate of Stokes. Definitely a guy to keep in our eye of sight as Stokes is out tonight. You know, where are they going to get points from? You know, Lasana, also the former home of Scout Lavasier. Another guy that's a brand in Clay Scouting.com. But he's in the 15 class, an elite 100 guy. We've got him sitting at 13 in the country. Good finish on the end. Cameron Taylor for two. And to finish our thought about Stokes, we've actually got him at number 22 in the country right now. So if you get an opportunity to get out and see him this year, definitely a young man worth seeing. And Taurus Gwynn gets a quick two the other way. And the Lynx 4-2 lead. Full court pressure from Corinth. They're going to harass, and the crowd loves that too. They love the full court, man-to-man, -man, in your face defense. Looks like both teams are going to play that style. So they're going to get their conditioning in. We know that much in this one. Bounce pass on the interior. Pulled out, cleared out of there by Patterson. Crossing over into the front court. He finds Stafford. He's a scorer. Pulls up from deep and knocks it down. Kendall Stafford. That's a big time shot right there. This game very different than the last. Not having the two dominant go-to guys on each team. More sum of all parts, especially with Stokes out today. But you're seeing Stafford trying to heat up early, and the crowd was ready for it. They were waiting for that young man to knock that jumper down. We had we had sound effects behind us. Whoop. People ready, people <laughs> ready to go. 
Three the other way. Big shot. Off front iron, no good. Hits the bar on the top. That's out of bounds. And Lasanne, that they're going to uh, subscribe to the uh, philosophy that you play as absolutely hard as you can, and then you give the bench the fist saying, take me out when you are winded. We'll put you back in when you're, when you're ready to go. Burkham into the front court. I've already seen a couple players motion to the bench saying, all right, I went hard, real hard for four minutes. Let's give me a quick blow. Burkham lets a three go. That was deflected, cleaned up by Stafford. He can't finish. Ball knocked out of bounds. That Addison Miller banging on the inside. Lasanne pushing it ahead in tempo now. Good strong take there. Left it short though. Got bodies flying. People on the ground shaking up on the plays. A Lasanne player. Berkham into the front court. Now Gwynn. And Taurus Gwynn with the left hand. Lost control in the lane. I believe it's going to be called for a walk. Both teams struggling to find the rhythm. You can tell by the score here. Just under four minutes to go. Neither team been able to get the type of flow that they want offensively. Blame that partly on the defense. But two also, nice size crowd in here, as you mentioned a minute ago, Logan. And I'm sure that's got the guys playing with a little bit of nerves. Amped up right now. Antares Gwynn gets the steal on another turnover. Morrison into the front court, gets it over to Burkham. He lost control, gets it into Gwynn. Gwynn had it batted away, kicks it over in the corner. Good looking shot there, not a three pointer. He was on the line, Javen Morrison for two. Corinth with an early 8-4 lead. Well, I, they might have given him a three in the corner. I'm not sure. I, I had him with seven points, but scoreboard says eight, so they might have gotten him a three there. Yeah, they did. It was sitting 5-4, so they went in and gave him credit for the three. Nobody's complained. Yeah. Roll no on, complaint. Man. We'll go there. I thought he was about 16, 17 feet, but I might have seen it wrong. Bounce pass on the inside, Gwynn with a big strong move and that's in there. And that's something that may not happen. Stokes is in the game on the help side D or uh, manning up in the post there. That move like that may not take place. Well, and that'll definitely be where you miss him, you know, in terms of the, the impact of him on the game. And he's a guy that's more than willing to clean the, the glass be a rim protector as well and then also finishes on the interior so you really can put him on the floor for 15 8 and 3 know that you're not going to have those numbers tonight but you've got to fill them and i think that's the second part of the statement is you can't cry woe is me you got to find a way to fill those numbers so the bench has to be more productive somebody's going to get an opportunity tonight to earn themselves some minutes here javen morrison gets the block on this end javen morrison listed at 5-9 how about your 5-9 rim protector he blocked the first one, went up to block the second. <clears throat> that's good help defense, and he, he's called for the foul on the second attempt. Yeah, that's a hustler right there. Can never be mad at that, man. Trying to make a play on the interior. When you talk about a hustler, Mr. Hustle for Corinth, it's Tata Strickland. He is uh, just one ball of energy, listed at 5'9". He's a freshman, and you're going to see him run all over this place. They'll play. Uh, Full court man-to-man -man defense with him in the game. Spin move. Win. He gets that to go. And Taurus Win has his scoring rhythm early. He's got a quick six. There's a stick. Strickland to the rim. No good. Was challenged. And now look at this defense from Strickland forcing the turnover. I told you, this kid's a ball of energy. He's just running around. He gets sloppy at times, but it's fun to watch. Well, it's always nice when you, you name. They come out and do exactly what they're supposed to do, exactly the notes that you've taken beforehand, yeah. right? Makes our job. Makes it feel more professional. Gwen, back iron, no good. Long rebound. The Lynx have it turnover Morrison scoop pass he turns it over and we got him break away the other way and easy two for uh, all day he's got three
Back the other way, reverse from Stafford. He's got five. And up and down we go. I said we're going to get conditioning in. I'm exhausted watching this pace of play right now. And these guys just going at it. Carlos can't handle the pass. Finally gets possession. Kicks it out in the corner. Long three, no good. Stafford clears. The other way. Dribbles through traffic. Pushes it ahead. Kicks it in the corner. Tata Strickland. Bounce pass to Antares Gwynn. Over on the wing. They pull up. Todd Wicks, that's no good. Hunter Faulkner in the game now, and that's Jesse Neelam's running the point. This is Cameron Taylor in the lane, burrowing his way in. That's got to be offensive, and it is. Offensive foul, an emphatic offensive foul call. Love it when the officials, they get the adrenaline too, waving off the basket. <laughs> He's definitely dialed into the game, man. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> 24.7 seconds on the clock. Seems like this first quarter took 30 seconds. I know, right? Well, no fouls when you look at, you know, one each way. I like it. Good basketball. Yeah, that's exactly the type of basketball you want to watch, man. David Morrison lobs it up. Loose ball on the floor. Who wants it more? The Lynx have it. Spinning in traffic and carrying the basketball. Corin Taylor. It'll be Corin's basketball. It's inbounding. 5-9 Jr. He gets it in. 10 seconds to play. Here's Wicks into the front court. Crossing over. Five on the clock. Three on the clock. It'll be Stafford. He's fouled shooting a three. Kendall Stafford will go to the line to extend the lead to 7-8 or even 9. Here early, I like his ability to make shots. You know, we'll see if he can do it from the free throw line as well. But it would be big to get three here, almost extended to a double-digit lead coming out of the first quarter. Coach Keith Green employing his two guards. Keep your heads up. You guys are dribbling with your head down. He said, not looking at all your options. He said the floor is open. Just look at it. Stafford gets two or three. And the heave at the buzzer is going to land short. Logan Stout alongside Brandon Clay. We've got more action coming your way. This instant replay powered by Powerade as we head to the break. You'll see Corinth knocking down a big three-pointer. That's Kendall Stafford. We're here at Corinth High School. It's the Corinth High Warriors against the Lasanne Lynx out of Memphis, Tennessee. Lynx and Warriors. Armad Wicks into the front court, kicks it on the wing. That's Tata Strickland still in the game. Jump shot for Morrison, no good. I believe it was, or he says it was deflected, but anyways, it's uh, Lasanne basketball. The officiating crew did not see that. I thought it was a good first quarter for Corinth. You know, being able to, to hold serve here on home floor, make life tough for Lasan and feel the, the gap, you know, of Stokes who's, who's not here, not allowing them to come out and much early 
that's exactly what Corinth was able to do. Combination of Stafford and a couple of the other guys. And uh, about as well as they could play in the first quarter, they did. An air ball three-point attempt there by, that was Jesse Neelams. He let that go and knew it was way off to the other end. And gets the ball in the corner. Strickland, good drop off. Can't finish underneath. Loose ball. Stepping on the end line is the Lynx player over there. That's Aldair Carlos. He's got three in the game and steps on the end line there. Burkham into the game as, along with Antares Gwynn. He'll replace Stafford. Always nice to be able to play your bench this early in the game, be able to get some guys some minutes, kind of get a feel for what's going on. Nice cut there. Gwynn spins in the lane, though, and here come the Lynx the other way in transition, dropping it off. Aldair missing the baseline jumper and clearing the rebound is big Tariq Johnson. Burkham. Now Tata Strickland. Blows, stops. Tries the Kevin Durant. Dirk Nowitzki won. Aid. He was unsuccessful there. Results in an easy two the other way for Aldair Carlos. We got a timeout for a shoe tie. And actually they're going to call delay a game on somebody I believe. Got to leave the ball alone when it comes out of the rim. I believe yeah. he tapped it. They got Aldair Carlo with yeah. the layup. In the front court, ball back. And Carlos is going to get another easy two. Aldair Carlos has seven in the game. And uh, most of the seven have come uh, by variety of the breakaway layup just like that well and if you keep green that's exactly what you didn't want coming out of what was a really productive first quarter you know was to give them a life and give them an opportunity to feel good about themselves you had them feeling as if they were on the ropes i'm sure and you let them right off the ropes and now you're right back into a regular game here this has been a great event it's the lighthouse thanksgiving class Credit the people at the Lighthouse Foundation and Corinth High School for making this game and this event possible. It's been a lot of fun, and we got one more after this, and it's going to be a great nightcap. Mississippi versus Georgia, Callaway versus Miller Grove. It'll be a lot of fun to watch. Oh, great lead there on the pass. That's nice. I like what Bertram did there. Got into the lane and then dropped it off for him. Little bounce pass. Walking before... He made his move, his Lynx player, Mark Crawford. That's the second time now Crawford struggled with the basketball in the open floor. The last time he was right here in front of our uh, table and kind of lost the handle to it as well. Burkham into the front court, crossing over, gets it to the wing, good dump down pass, and on the inside, the big man's got two more, Tyreek Johnson, they're feeding him. Aldair Carlos, wow, going hard to the rim. He's fouled, bounces up like a rubber ball. He'll go to the line. He's a high-energy guy. He definitely is. He's out here playing hard, man. Loves to get out on the floor, run the floor in transition. And anytime you can do that and continue to find ways to get the basketball in your hands and attack the rim, more times than not, you're going to be successful in this game. Left that free throw short. The Addison Miller checking in for Lausanne. Coming up empty at the line, Aldell Car Aldair Carlos misses both. Stafford back the other way, gets it to Burkham, who bounces it to Gwynn. And Taurus Gwynn it's with awesome. the right hand. Burkham went up. He wanted to shoot that one, man. He wanted to shoot that. Saw he didn't have it and just left it. Rolling on the ground. James Babb. I have to laugh. He 
He, he got on the ground, had the ball, and then I guess got in his lazy boy and just, <laughs> just decided to lay down on his back there. That's a walk every time. You're on the ground, you gotta stay stationary. Burkham with the ball up top. Working with the left hand. Picks up his dribble. He's got Armand Wicks with the ball now. Wicks with the shooter sleeve. Now Stafford burrowing his way in. Wicks behind the back dribble. Burkham up top. They're feeding it again to Johnson. Johnson gets it to Gwynn. Gwynn just elevates and scores over his defender. He's got eight. That's a nice turn back over his right shoulder there to finish that shot. That's tough. In the, in the lane, turning it over. Here comes Corinth the other way. A three on two, fast break. Pass over to Burkham. He's the money man from deep. In and out, no good. Cleaned up and put in by Gwynn. He now has 10. Well, and here we go right after the Coach Green called. It was a 15 to 11 game at that point. They've come out on an 8-0 run since then. That's good basketball. While we've got a second here, we'll look at the replay. Burkham unable to capitalize on the open three, but Gwynn will clean it up and put it in. That is powered by Powerade. We've raised our game. Also want to thank the Hampton Inn for their sponsorship of this. Uh, welcoming all teams to the Lighthouse, Lighthouse Thanksgiving Classic. Positions are get in, get out, and get well. As well as crossover basketball, providing full statistical breakdowns of game film to players and coaches. Corinth wanting to face guard on the inbound. That leaves you open to the run out pass, but a lot of high school teams won't throw it. It's a difficult pass to throw. No question, not only to throw it, but to throw it correctly. You know, a lot of kids will put it out there, but it doesn't always result in what you want. Too much air on it, you got a, a defensive back back pick it off, Antares Gwynn. Off the turnover, it's Wicks for three, back iron no good. Johnson thought he had it, but now Babb does. He's pushed out of bounds, and Johnson gets the foul called on him. If you're watching at home, you can tweet at us. Use the hashtag SUVTV. We'll do our best to get your tweets on air here. Get your tweet a little FaceTime. Tell us you're enjoying the uh, broadcast. Nifty little move there. It's not going to result in any points. <clears throat> and Corinth wastes no time. Here they go the other way. Bullet pass. Hacks. Handle it. It was deflected out of bounds, though. It'll be Corinth basketball. Warriors inbounding under their own basket. Stop and pop for Stafford at the elbow. He got it. Boy, that was a smooth-looking jump shot for him. I like his game. Not trying to do too much, just playing his part. He's got nine. Smooth. Got that good play. Reminds me of the little style of play. You know, you think about a guy like an Anton Walker or somebody, you know, kind of a bigger body guy, but with that real wing skill set and the ability to make shots. He's, he's wearing the right number to be compared to Antoine Walker. <laughs> Walker wore 24 at the University. An Antoine Walker reference. Haven't heard that in a hey. while. That's a, good, that's a good comparison. That's, that's what I'm here for, man. The 96 Wildcat team is what made him famous and got his start. Him, Ron Mercer, Tony Delt. Listen to you. You're not from Kentucky. Sounds oh, like man. you are. I'm from Kentucky. It's like. <laughs> to know the rosters from the late 90s Kentucky teams. That's awesome, man. No, that was, I mean, just, he's all about some good basketball and just a, a great day in, great day in basketball lore, man. Scott Anderson, all those different guys that came through during that time period, man, fun to watch. Uh, Carlos walks as he gets into the lane. All there, Carlos. Carlos. Well, it's hard. I mean, you know, obviously they haven't scored in a while here, but Take that. You know, if I'm Kenneth White and you tell me Carlos is going to travel trying to make a play, I'm okay with that because we need plays to be made. We need somebody 
that's going to be able to step up here and get us going. And they're going to try to get some momentum started on the defensive end, and they do. Bab forces the turnover. Well, a couple of volunteers and look like a couple of dancers almost got <laughs> run into there. Dancers, <laughs> dancers dressed as angels, oh, I might add. Oh, man, that's, that's not the move, man. Say a prayer. <laughs> into the front court is Lasan setting up their offensive set. Pounding the right-hand dribble, pull-up, swatted out of the air. Here comes Corinth the other way, full head of steam. Burkham on the wing for three. Front iron no good. Can't get it going like he did last game. Dropped in five from downtown. Well, the crowd was waiting to explode with him. If he'd have hit it, it would have been showtime in terms of the crowd noise here. Burkham gets a steal, rolled right to him. He goes to the lane, has that one punished. And here comes Lasan, two on one. Babs going to get an opportunity at the rim. He's fouled by Hack Smith. I think that's one of those situations if you're, you're Burkham, you can almost feel too good. Right. You know, go ahead and wait and transition, find the, the trail running post player, hit them with it, and let them finish that play. Bab at the free throw line. The big man converts. Interior pass. There's Hack Smith way out of his comfort zone, but he does find somebody. And Antares Gwynn's going to finish. Gwynn is filling up the point column on his stat sheet, minute 20 to play, and a, a shifting of the pivot feet. Turnover against Rashad Williams and the Lasan Lynx, and it's danger time for them. They're down 14. No question. Well, and the, the home team has done, done such a great job of applying pressure in the half-court situation. Uh, you can tell, you know, Lasan is not in the rhythm in terms of just getting the shots they want. You know, it's one thing to struggle from the field, it's another thing to not be able to get the shots that you want. Right now, that's what it looks like here. They're just not getting the type of shot or two as they would like to have. Burkham shot no good. Finally cleared off by Babb. In the front court, losing the handle, regaining control. The Rashad Williams now up top, setting up the offense. Into the lane, good, strong take there. He's had a hard time handling the basketball, but Cameron Taylor, when he gets ahead of steam, he's a, a force on the inside. Taylor, just a sophomore. It's a good move there. You've got to attack. You know, same thing we talked about last game, when as they were struggling to find themselves offensively. Get into the lane, attack, try to make it easy for yourself and easy for, you know, the the people around you in terms of your teammates to get open looks. Even if you miss that first initial attack, there's an offensive rebound, something coming. Taylor converts the second. 27 seconds to play in the second quarter. 27-15 is your score. Stafford in the middle, kicks it over on the wing. It's Patterson. Now Morrison working with the left hand. Defender all over him. Here's Stafford. He likes to score. Stop, pop, <laughs> and he drops it from the free throw line. Give him two more. Three seconds to play. Needs to heave one. Not going to happen. Taylor's shot attempt will not count. 29-15. Warriors all over the links here in Corinth. More from the Lighthouse Thanksgiving Classic. As we head to the break, you see the nifty, scoring ability of staff warriors. Crossover intelligence for basketball can save you hours of time. We break down and stat your game film for you and act as your video coordinator by giving you searchable clips, advanced statistics, shot charts, and a lot of other great info that you can access from any PC or through our iPad application. Just upload your video through the Crossover website, and 
24 hours later, your film will be completely indexed and tagged. Each play will become its own video clip, allowing you to search the footage for anything you'd like. Here we'll take a look at all three pointers that were made in the fourth quarter. All of your offensive and defensive sets can also be tagged, so you can view the appropriate clips and determine which plays are achieving the best results. You can add any clip to a playlist or highlight reel and share everything with your players or assistant coaches. Crossover will also provide you with all of the numbers from each game, including complete stats for both teams and advanced metrics like these. We even take the shooting numbers a step further with an interactive shot chart that lets you visualize the data. Filter by player, quarter, makes or misses and click on any shot to watch the corresponding video. Crossover Intelligence will keep you from spending hours in the film room and get you back to actually coaching. Together, we can turn smarter video into more wins for your team. That's the crossover effect.
Welcome back to the Lighthouse, Cla Lighthouse Thanksgiving Classic here in Corinth High School. You'd think after I'd said that enough, uh, I would have that figured out. Uh, we are here at Corinth High School, Corinth, Mississippi. We've got LaSanne Lynx out of Memphis, Tennessee. The homestanding Warriors. Warriors wearing white with red trim. And the Warriors uh, really put it on LaSanne in that first half. They lead 29-15 as we start the second. Yet Isaiah Stokes on the bench for LaSanne. He is in street clothes due to a lower back injury. And so that really handicaps LaSanne right now. Uh, they are not their normal self. A lot of people here were wanting to see Isaiah, but a lot of them are just Corinth High School fans. They've got good support of their basketball program in this city. As Hacksmith's entrance pass to Antares Gwynn is too, too high. Out of bounds, and it'll be LaSanne basketball. On the inside, and a give to Bab. Bab traveled before he put up the shot. On deck, we have the six-time defending 5A state champions from the state of Georgia taking on the three-time defending 5A state champs from the state of Mississippi. It'll be Miller Grove and Callaway. And how about the persistence on the other end? Corinth continues to attack. Hack Smith finally gets two and is fouled. His first two of the game. We will have uh, some stars in the building next. Malik Newman and Altariq Gilbert, two high-outed recruits. Gilbert, class of 16. And Newman, class of 15. We'll talk all about them here in a little bit as we have Brandon Clay, scouting expert, with us. Gwynn's shot up, no good. Battling for it, Stafford, his shot, no good. The Lynx clear it out. Here they come the other way, pushing it in transition. Might have got away with an extra step. No call. On the floor. Ends up in the hands of Bab. He goes up. He's fouled by Smith. Bab at the line, in and out on his first. Bab can't convert on either one. Lasan reads every point they can get. They trail by 16. Stafford the other way. Boy, that's a dagger. Kendall Stafford, give him three more. Compared to Antoine Walker earlier, and I have to agree, the young man can just flat out shoot it. In transition, a give to Gwynn. They had a fast break opportunity. Gwynn is telling his and throw it to the rim. I'm ready to throw it down. Burkham pressuring the ball. Neelums gets it into the front court. Three on the way from Cameron Taylor, no good. Back iron, cleared off by Stafford. Up ahead to Gwynn, he's got to run out. He goes for the dunk and is met at the rim. Good challenge there from Taylor. Taylor's called for the foul. In and out for Gwynn there. He converts on the second. And Taurus Gwynn, he's having a good day. All there, good looking pass there. Good ball movement, good possession. Taylor finishes around the rim. Burkham. Trey Burkham handling pressure from Aldair. And he turns it over. Three on one the other way. Aldair 
Carlos finishes at the rim. Stafford pushing the tempo. Corinth with the basketball and a 16 point lead. Good look there. And Taurus Gwynn thought about the slam and then at the last minute decided he'll take two off the glass instead. Babb has it at half court. He stepped across half court. And here comes Taylor, strong to the rim, off the glass and lays it in. Offense starting to pick up. And it was at a premium in the first half for Lasanne. Hack Smith in the middle. Puts the ball on the floor, not the one. And there's Burkham for three. Can't get one to go. He's 0 for 3 from downtown. Crawford gives it up to Taylor. Taylor floater in the lane. Back iron no good. Gets a rebound. Goes up. He's fouled. He'll go to the line for two. Cam Taylor at the line. Too strong on the first. It rattles around and comes out. Lasan has plenty of opportunities to climb back in this, but they're not converting. Stafford in transition. Behind the back dribble, now a cross-court pass to Tata Strickland. There's Gwynn spinning off his defender, just gonna sky to the rim, he knows. Nobody on the floor can elevate like he can right now, so when he gets up there, he'll be all alone. <coughs> Taylor in the lane, good, strong move. Taylor starting to find his offensive rhythm. Wicks into the front court, gets it to Strickland. Morrison up top, Gwynn on the wing, Stafford. Gwynn in the lane, has it swatted. Lands right in of Tata Strickland, who puts it in. Strickland, a fan favorite here in Corinth. It's a timeout, we'll take the timeout with them. With them. Logan Stout bringing you Lighthouse Thanksgiving Classic. This broadcast is powered by SUV TV. Logan Stout alongside Marcus Burnett for a little while, and he is the founder of SUV TV. I want to give Marcus a chance real quick just to tell everybody viewing at home, and, and a reminder, you can tweet at us. Use the hashtag SUV TV if you are enjoying the broadcast or you have a uh, question or something you want to talk about. Just tweet at us. We'll get back to you. I uh, might even put your tweet on air, but we'll talk to Marcus a little bit as the action plays out in front of us. Uh, tell us a little bit about SUV TV. Tell us about Sports Utility Vehicle and what you guys do. Well, Sports Utility Vehicle, our main focus areas are live broadcasts uh, as well as sports marketing. Uh, so being able to provide the types of broadcasts that you see, work with events that are as strong as the Lighthouse Classic, but also be able to provide some good exposure uh, for businesses in the process. So that's the main focus of the SUV. SUV TV is our content arm, so we focused on our broadcast content, which really helps to add another piece to the event and make sure those that can't be here actually can be, uh, for lack of a better better term. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a great way of putting it. I think this is huge for, like, these little you know, they're from Memphis, Tennessee. That's a pretty good little drive from Corinth. Uh, they have families, they have friends, they have fans. Uh, they can get on us, thesuvtv.com, just watch the game. And you guys cover it in a way that 
I think brings them right into the action. And uh, hopefully they enjoy the broadcast and appreciate it. I understand you've gotten some pretty good feedback on, on what you guys are doing with these broadcasts at this event. And in other events, uh, it's, it's really getting momentum and being appreciated by people. Well, yeah, well, what's great is we like not only the live portion, but on demand. You've got a lot of college coaches, sure. family members, you know, people that are able to go back and really not have a time clock on when they can watch their loved ones play or potential recruits play. But at the end of the day, our broadcasts are only as good as the events, the teams, and players that we cover slash work with. And the Lighthouse Classic is a prime example. Organization, great staff, great facility. And they've dotted every I and crossed every T here, and it's been great to be a part of it. So if I'm on YouTube, and I know that's a popular site. Everybody, everybody goes to YouTube. Seems like once a day somebody sees YouTube. Uh, if, I, if I want to see an SUV TV broadcast, what do I do? Well, you can search for us uh, on YouTube at SUV TV. Just put that in the search box. Or you can go to the SUV TV.com as well. Take you straight there. Gotcha. That's uh, good information, and we appreciate uh, you hosting these broadcasts and powering these. It's, uh, it's been a great event and a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed being a part of it. Kendall, uh, excuse me, that's going to be Addison Miller. He changed his jersey before the game. The, the roster doesn't reflect that. I got it fixed now, though. Addison Miller gets his first two. Three in the corner, no good. How about the hustle? Armand Wicks saved that in. Now Tatus Strickland crossing over. He's harassed. He really wants a foul. There's one player you don't foul. It's Tatus Strickland. The fans love him. Interior passing and an easy two there. Tatus Strickland. The other way, lots of action. Carlos. Alder, or excuse me, Alder Carlos uh, gets that one swatted. I get his name backwards. Carlos seems like a first name, but it's actually his second or last name. Here he is penetrating in the lane. Hard to the hole. No good. Tip up. No good. Stafford clears it out. Baseball pass up ahead. Not enough steam on it. And now we've got a traveling violation. Hunter Faulkner couldn't get his feet in order. 15-point advantage for Corinth on their home floor. 41 seconds to play in the third. Javen Morrison and Armad Wicks. They're the two guards up top. Penetrate and kick for Morrison. Stafford wide open. Too strong. Morrison is fouled. And then he lets his defender hear about it. Morrison's going to go to the free throw line. He'll Wicks and Morrison both. Uh, quick to talk a little. You got to like competitors like that. Some people say, you know, keep your mouth shut, don't talk trash. But some guys, that's the way they get going. It uh, doesn't have to be offensive, foul, trash talk. Tell the defender, you know, I'm, I'm guarding you this whole game. You're not going to get any points. I'm going to blanket you. I'm going to frustrate you. And, and they're going to let them hear about it. They say it in fewer words than that. Tata Strickland with the steal. He's a scrapper. He's battling, and he's he got to reach in and a foul. That's going to go against Neelams. Corinth first. Corinth, the Warriors, forcing all kinds of turnovers. Morrison up top. Gets it to Stafford for three. High arcing shot, no good. Tries to follow, knocks it out of bounds. Lynx basketball. Pass deflected out of bounds by Morrison. He shakes his head no as if to say 
If you're trying to inbound it to Neelums, it's not going to happen. I'm all over it. <laughs> Seven seconds to play. They need to get up the floor in a hurry. Hurry. Here's Taylor. Losing control. Neelums has it. Half court. Double pump. Over the backboard. Off a rail and into the hands of one of the fans here. We finish the third quarter. Corinth extends that lead. They're up 17 now. Four eight. More action from the Lighthouse Thanksgiving Classic when we return on SUV TV. House Thanksgiving Classic. I got to share a tweet we just received, and about 15 minutes ago he tweeted it. Troy Baker is the athletic director for Lausanne Collegiate School in Memphis, Tennessee. They are the ones in action right now. And he says, thanks for the shout out for the new uniforms. They look great, all that stuff, you know, but he's, <laughs> he finishes it by saying, uh, by the way, it's pronounced Lausanne. And I've been saying Lausanne because there is an S in there. But you pronounce it with a Z. And speaking of looking good, that was Mark Crawford high above the rim slamming that one home. Lausanne trying to put a run together here in the It's interesting. A scrap for the ball. Trey Burkham right in front of us. He and Adam Boyce tied up for the jump ball. And Lausanne has possession. Yeah, the young fella echoed his AD sentiments there. He, he had an emphatic flush. He said, to say, hey, you got to get that, get that pronunciation oh right. Gosh. Get he, the says, he says it's Law Zan. And he slammed that one through. Red back and threw it through emphatically. Back dunks, multiple turnovers. He's going again, and this time he drops it off. The layup is missed. Put up. He's going to follow. Still nobody is able to score, and now we have a foul underneath. Wow, it just got heated in, at Corinth High School, courtesy of Mark Crawford. You know what, that, that, AD, that AD has got to feel like, you know what, this you guys could have mispronounced it a long time ago <laughs> if I would have known that this would, it would incite this type of a Guys, we've got to credit this run to Troy Baker, yeah. really, is what this comes down to. Troy Baker tweets at us, the athletic director at Lausanne Collegiate School, and this is what happens shortly after we correct them. Mark Crawford to the rim for the slam in traffic. That was violent. It's only a 12-point game. Trey Burkham. Lost control. And I tell you, Corinth is flustered right now. Here comes Taylor. He's all alone at the end, missed the layup. They can't convert all of a sudden. Into the front court. Here's Wicks. Throws it up to Gwynn. He can't finish the lob. Neelam's in the front court. He's fouled by Wicks. And you're going to see, Coach, that was one of those. Reminds me a lot of my high school coach. You know, they went for it. They let the crowd sort of go for the lob when they really got a two-on-one opportunity and coach couldn't get the hook out quick enough. He wants Wicks out of there for throwing the lob when really he had an easy two there. Got a timeout called by the head coach for Lausanne, Kenneth White. He's very upset with his team. They had all the momentum in the world and then they can't finish around the rim all of a sudden. 
I know who can finish around the rim. His name's Mark Crawford. He did it twice. First with that two-handed jam that you're going to see on this replay. It's the instant replay powered by Powerade. This was the first of the two. You've already seen the more violent one. But he put that through. I think everybody raised their eyebrows. Like, whoa, this Mark Crawford kid, he can jump. And then on the second one, he come through in traffic and one-handed just emphatically threw it through. Something about Corinth versus these Tennessee-based teams. It, it just it creates a good game. We had Bolton last night, and here we have a great one against Laws. Neelam's into the front court. Shrugs off his defender. Gets an entrance pass to Babb. He lost control. Loose ball on the floor. Gwynn comes out with it. He's throwing some elbows in there, but somebody reached in and fouled him. It's going to be Kendall Stafford. Correction. Stafford plays for Corinth. This will be Addison Miller. You know, Brandon, you do a lot of traveling, catch a lot of basketball, and obviously you know about your Isaiah Stokes, some of your headliners. But talk about these kinds of opportunities where you're seeing other players, whether it be for Lausanne or for some of the other teams you see, take advantage of some of the stages created Look by out. the Look Woo! <laughs> Exhibit A. Oh, man. I mean, why don't you? It's as if he's plugged into your ear, man. <laughs> you know, it's... It's exciting. You know, I, I think we all forget sometimes how exciting we are here on Tuesday and Friday and Saturday nights and, and play this game. And, and an opportunity tonight for a young man, you know, like this to be able to come out in a big time game atmosphere. I mean, the lower rim of this place is full. You've already got about half of the upper rim both ways full as well. How often do you get to play in this atmosphere? You know, and then you've got the game being broadcast on SUV TV. So, now as you're making these plays, you can send these to college coaches nationwide. You can send it to grandma, my friend, you know, anytime you want to watch it back. It's just a heck of an atmosphere and a heck of an opportunity, and you're watching these guys take full advantage. All there, Carlos fakes the behind-the-back pass, can't finish at the rim. Taylor in the lane, lost control, out of bounds. Warrior basketball. Mark Crawford. <laughs> Three jams. He's got this place with her eyebrows raised. Oh, Look yeah. Out. The lob. That's Javen Morrison lobbing it up to Antares. He finishes at the rim. And I'll tell you why that happened. Lausanne has extended so much effort and energy to get into this that they were slow getting back on that play. And that led to an easy lob. And I tell you who's exhausted it's Cameron Taylor. Cameron Taylor is just absolutely He's working really hard to do anything. And this is Mark Crawford on the replay, powered by Powerade. Crawford throws it down in transition. And what we've got here is uh, Lausanne player penetrated and was stuffed, resulting in a jump ball, and it's Corinth basketball. And now I don't know what the holdup is. They're going to clean up the floor here. We got players and bodies flying everywhere. Well, Marcus, to touch on the that you just had about who's taking advantage, and even a young man like Gwen Stafford, you know, those are guys playing in front of a packed home crowd, juice, everybody's ready, anxious, and they're playing really well. You know, they really well. Obviously, you know, Mark Crawford, you know, gets the accolades per se for the, the dunks and finishes, but and right on cue. <laughs> you know, Gwen and Stafford really throughout the course of the game have led the way and led the pace. Gwen finishes at the rim for two more. He's having a great day. Aldair Carlos penetrates and kicks. Here's Crawford, floater in the lane, no good. Gwen on the run, gives it up. Reverse layup. Ooh, that was smooth. That's Quentin Patterson with his first two. Timeout, Lausanne. They are frustrated down to our right. The 16-point advantage for Corinth. All that energy 
Expended by Lausanne to get back into this. And now Corinth is taking the life out of them with a run of their own. The lead is back to 16. Logan Stout alongside Marcus Burnett and Brandon Clay. We'll take this is the Lighthouse Thanksgiving Classic, a broadcast powered by SUV TV. Lausanne with the basketball heading into the front court. They are in desperate need of a run now, trailing by 16 with just four minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Bab up top, kicks it over to Rashad Williams. He's going to cross up. Little handoff to Hunter Faulkner. He's harassed, lost control of the ball. Bab with a no look. I don't know how he found his man, but he did. Rashad Williams. Basket and the foul. A pass from an interior base player, mid-air. I don't know that the pass necessarily was by design, right? But he knew exactly where his teammate was, found a way to get it to him. And then on top, Williams takes the contact to complete the play. And converts the three-point play. They're down, they were down 16. Play makes it a 13-point game. Still some life left in Lausanne. Stafford. Out by the volleyball spike line. Bab got his hand on that one. And here comes the Lynx the other way. Here's Neelums into the lane. Kicks it to Taylor. Correction, Crawford. Crawford lays that in for an easy two. Surprised to not see him slam that through. He dunks everything else. Babs going to get his hand on another one, deflect that one, loose ball right in front of us. Last touch, I thought, by Lausanne, and it is. It'll be Corinth basketball. Well, down 11, you got to see if you can scramble. Find a way to get two quick stops. I mean, you need to get those in the next 35, 40 seconds. Stops and scores to go with them. Wicks. Crossing over. He's getting pressure from Boyce. Oh, How one. about Aldair Carlos with the steal? He'll lay it up for two. Carlos, a heck of a defender. He's got several steals in this one. Nine-point game. They've got it inside ten. I had a high school coach that said in, anything can no question. Floater. He's just taking up. Oh. Big there. Burkham kept Good that pass. play alive Great and pass. it ends up with a two for Stafford. Stafford gets the point. Got the play alive for sure. Neelum's into the front court. Euro step off the glass. Easy. His first two. And there's a steal. Aldair Carlos almost completed the and one. He bounces up like a rubber ball. <laughs> That's twice he's done that. He gets knocked down, and I guess he wants the defender to You know, I'm up faster than I can. Let's go. He's ready for the next play. It's funny. It reminds me of uh, no sh Georgia football <laughs> fan when he used to get up and then would just sprint, sprint back to the huddle, sprint to the sideline, wherever he was going. He was in a dead sprint for it. And you've got uh, a lot of people looking to the uh, stands up here. That either means there's a coach here or an incident. <laughs> so a little, little extracurricular activity. I think, uh, it, I think it's an incident. It's yeah. the unfortunate <laughs> variety, I believe. We have a police escort taking some fans out of here. So on the far side over there, you see some people leaving, <laughs> you see some people standing. Uh, it could be good or bad. And in this <laughs> case, I believe it's of the bad variety. Play on anyway. Offensive rebound for Lausanne. Last touched 
by Lausanne off the miss. It's a nine point game and you're gonna see full court pressure, face guarding defense. Well, you never wanna see any kind of incident Mara, uh, not only a game like this, but what a great event. So get that thing cleaned up and back to action. Gwynn in transition, drops it off, ball on the floor. Burkham thought about the three, dribbles out of it. Now he's in a world of trouble. He's trapped, gets it out, and now trapped. The Corinth head coach, that would be Coach Keith, one for timeout, but instead we got a foul. He'll take that instead. It's one and one time. We're under two minutes to play. Not that we're rules. We're under two minutes. You have a different foul rule, but under two late in the game. It's usually when teams are in the bonus and at the line shooting one and one. It's Patterson. He missed the front end, but the long rebound came to Stafford and he lost it off his leg. And you've got to knock down free throws. And it was Coach Green just drops, just puts his hands on his knees, drops his head, and shakes it for a second. But you've got a chance to assist this game, fellas. You've got to find a way to convert those chances. Williams into the front court. Working gets the defender. Great defense there. Just picked his pocket. Patterson did. But then there's a turnover the other way. And I believe a travel on Burkham is called. And so it'll be Lausanne basketball, timeout Corinth. They want a full timeout. Coach Green letting his team have it, telling them, we've got a chance to put this game away, up nine, and we're not converting right now. Can't have any missed opportunities. Brandon Clay's going to listen in on the huddle here and hear what Coach Keith Green is telling him. He'll relay that. I've got Marcus Bennett to my right. Marcus. Tell us about the next game. I know Brandon's got a lot of info on some on some of these players, but you're awfully familiar with this Miller Grove team because that's kind of close to your home, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah, most definitely. While Brandon and I both hail from the Atlanta area as far as where we're based, I've uh, broadcasted several of Miller Grove's games, i say, over the past four or five seasons. It just so happens that all of those seasons state championship <laughs> at the end of them as they won six straight. But, you know, it's interesting coming from Perspective. You see Miller Grove, you know, really dominate their class over the past six years or so. You always enjoy seeing a team like that meet different tests in these type of national events. And, you know, they're no stranger to a national schedule. So it's a pleasure to be able to take an Alterique Gilbert and the likes of a Miller Grove versus a Malik Newman in this next kind of matchup. As I'm sure Brandon is always used to taking in given that, uh, <laughs> that travel schedule. Brandon. You were in the huddle there for Corinth. How about the law? My goodness, if Crawford would have reeled that one in, I would. I might have ran on the. I might have ran on the court and shut this one down. But what's Coach Green telling his team there in the huddle? Well, he was talking to them about keeping obviously their, them in front. And I think they did that right there. You know, they did not let you know Crawford get between them and the basket to make a, a play there. And the second thing was be patient with the basketball. What are we in a rush for? We're going to make free throws. If given the opportunity. This is a team we can make free throws, so don't worry about it. Don't rush, don't press, let's do what we've done all game. Be steady and consistent. And Taurus Gwynn drops it off to Patterson for an easy two. They're trying to ice this one away. They lead by 11 with coming up on a minute left. Good take by Neelam. That's twice he's done that lately. Gotten to the rim and finished high off the glass. A nine point game, a minute seven to play. Another timeout. All right, Brandon, I'll let you talk about this nightcap a little bit well. as well. We've got Miller Grove and Callaway, state championships galore. Both teams, you're clapping your hands, you're excited. What are you looking forward to? Well, you know what? I, I had a chance to talk with Sharman White, actually out at USA Basketball in October, and he does a lot of stuff with them, does some stuff uh, all across the country in terms of clinics, things like that, the head coach of Miller Grove. And one of the things he said is, we just play the way we play. You know, so it's time to out to Reed Gilbert, Real and Richardson. They lost pieces from last year, graduation, things like that. And Callaway's extremely good. 
You know, whether it's Decardo Day, whether it's Damian Moore on the interior, Demencio Vaughn, obviously Malik Newman, they have a loaded roster. So this is as good as any team, if not better than any team, that Miller Grove will face all season inside of the state of Georgia. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they respond. You know, Altari Gilbert now for the first time in his career is the go-to guy with limited perimeter experience. Not limited perimeter help, but limited perimeter. And some guys are going to have to grow up tonight for Sharman White and his crew. And it's why you make the drive over here five hours to take part in this event. Lots of people filing in. They want to see some good basketball, some premier talent. <coughs> we have a reach in. Lausanne commits a foul in the backcourt. Trey Burkham has been harassed. i tell you this about Burkham. He hasn't been a hot shooter uh, today like he was yesterday. But he's just a sophomore. He will develop. He's going to be a really solid player for Corinth the next couple years. We saw how dangerous he is yesterday. He's not the high-flying variety. Probably not going to draw looks from high major D1s or anything like that. He's a good fundamental player, and that's who you want at the free throw line right now. He knocks down the first. Bottom line is there is always room for th in this game for people who can rebound, defend, and make an open shot with their feet set because that's usually what happens when guys get going. So he's going to have an opportunity to continue playing somewhere. Neil, uh, how about that <laughs> steal? Patterson just lurks in like a defensive back, takes that one away. A center fielder, if you will. It's going to result in an easy two for Gwen. It was oh, oh, wow. I said an easy two for, twi for, <laughs> for Gwen. And twice he was denied the second time. Mark Crawford put it out of bounds. This has been bad, a, a bad commits showing. a foul. Yeah, yeah go ahead. It's, it's been a great showing. Just overall, um, you know, in a game where maybe there's not that feature marquee player, you know, Isaiah Stokes obviously not being in the game, you know, in terms of a guy that's a Brandon Clay Scouting.com elite 100 caliber recruit. But there are plenty of guys here who have left the mark in mind and will go into the database inside of the system once I get back into the office next week. Really impressive uh, situation here, Justin the floor these guys are all playing hard too Patterson with that great play defensively his team is up 10 he could have just been hanging out and let him catch it on the inbounds but no he finds his way into that play the people of Corinth should be really proud of their local basketball team here if you're in the Corinth area first of all what are you doing get out here to the gym <laughs> second of all support your warrior basketball team they are uh, uh, there's fun to watch Gwen and Stafford that's a tough one two scoring punch there Neelam's in the lane, tries the windmill, got a little cute with that, try to spin it. No good here, and we have a fast break. Smart play by Morrison. He slows it down, shifts down a gear. He's fouled, and uh, this one is pretty much over. Seconds to play, Corinth is going to get a win today. 59-46 is your score with 34 to play, and Morrison at the line. I'll tell you what, I know he missed that free throw there, but Morrison's another guy when you start to talk about what Coach Green can look for this season. You know, we offer, it's still November. You know, the tail end at this point, almost December, but still November today. And this career team is going to be very good in terms of what they bring to the table, what they do night in and night out, the way they play. They've got shooters. They've got slashers. You know, they've got a couple of guys, Stafford being one, that can shoot it and slash. Um, they just play tough. You know, they don't have that big, imposing guy in the middle, per se, but they rebound well as the team. Their guards rebound from the guard positions, even on the defensive end, and they're going to make it tough for a lot of people most nights. Another foul and another opportunity <coughs> for Corinth to go to the line and ice this one away. They lead by 14 with 22 seconds left. Over, but the final score, we just got to figure that out. We know Corinth will come out on top. Patterson leaves the first short. And Cans the second. Neelam's in for Lausanne. And now a still a breakaway. We'll see if he can get up, and he's just going to kiss it off the glass. Patterson takes two. 
Well, we go back to Patterson, still defending hard as if his team is down. Second time in 90 seconds of gameplay that he's made a play on the defensive end. Berkham dribbles it out. A victory for the Warriors on their home floor, 63-48 over a good Lausanne Leaks team, even without Isaiah Stokes. It's a very good team. And that's a good win for the Corinth Warriors. Logan Stout alongside Brandon Clay. Buckle up because we've got state championships galore on deck. It'll be the state champs from Georgia versus the state Mississippi, Atlanta area school by the name of Miller Grove versus a team from Jackson, Mississippi in Callaway featuring who some believe is the third or second best prospect in the class of 2015, Malik Newman. We'll tell you all about it and bring you the action next right here on SUV TV.